Okay. All right. Um, yeah, sorry to interrupt dinner. Oh, no, no, I, no, 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 not at all. I, it was not a, not a big deal. In fact, um, okay. and if something, I'm using a brand new microphone that somebody had shipped to me. So if I'm coming in weird or puffy or whatever, let me know. All right. I mean, you sound crystal clear on this end so far. Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay. Where the hell do I start? Uh, <laughs> incidentally, uh, just conversationally i just spoke to uh mad mike hughes oh you, you know did speak to, yeah, yes i do yeah yeah <laughs> I, I talked to him a couple hours ago uh, he's a character <laughs> yeah yeah he is you know he approached us on on this he was gonna because i i'm doing the disclaimer in case he decides to auger himself into the ground on tuesday well, by the way is he still doing it on tuesday or is it is it canceled entirely he doesn't know he, he doesn't know he said tuesday wednesday possibly saturday so we'll see <laughs> whatever yeah anyway he was he was gonna do this regardless and he approached us yeah. for fu for funding and was like you you know the story from his side and and it's like yeah, yeah sure i, I kind of got that impression yeah yeah so what it's, I, don't, I still don't understand though is uh according to everything even if he goes up 1800 feet that's according to people believe in the spherical model of the earth you need right. to be at least 30 or forty thousand feet up oh to, oh yeah no no he's no, he's not proving anything. In fact, I remember when the stories first came out, initially the, the first stories that were run on him were, you know, Daredevil guy is going to just launch a rocket. And then right. somebody, and I don't remember which media outlet it was, said that, oh, well, you know, they put two and two together. It's like, well, it says research flat earth, so maybe he's trying to prove flat earth. And then right. everybody ran with it. I mean, everybody right. ran when we knew in the community, and I've been saying this for the last two or three interviews, is like, look, it's not an experiment. He's not going up with anything. We're we're just hoping he gets out of this thing alive. Uh, yeah. So, no, no, there's there's no experiment here. He's not going to, no, of course, 1,800 feet, that's nothing. I mean, I, I yeah. lived in Denver for 20 years. So that's 5,000 <laughs> right. feet up. You're not, you're not going to be able to prove anything with the rocket. It's right. literally just an awareness stunt. On yeah. on his part, happy to do it. Honestly, it was the best what eight thousand dollars we ever spent because yeah. I mean every heck you're calling me. This is it's I, I've done, <laughs> I've gotten a lot of calls before, but Hustler Magazine that's a first. So <laughs> yeah. So uh, so what? what how, you get a chance, just email me some nudes and you know, make sure those go in the story. Too. Exactly. Exactly. Oh yeah, I got to tell so you when you say you, the best eight thousand you ever spent. Uh, the I forget who funded him. The group you're you're associated with the group that's funded him, it, or you just it, in the movement in general? Yeah, it just in the movement in general. That particular okay. group was it was a crowdfunding thing. It was done by a group initially when they first gave him the money. It was Infinite Plane Society, okay. and they have now merged with other groups and now are part of the Flat Earth Network. And, and that part's kind of cool. So, and, and initially, honestly, we didn't even know if he was going to, you know, you talked to him. He, we didn't know yeah. if he was going to pull it off at all. It was like, okay, let's, let's take a chance. And he was supposed to launch during the summer and it didn't look like, like it was going to happen. And then the, the timing couldn't have been better because we just did our conference, the, the, the first ever down in North Carolina. And then right afterwards, he was like, oh yeah, I'm going to launch. It's like, okay. <laughs> so we just it's like great good good for us uh and honestly whether he launches or not at this point all the press is i mean now there's secondary stories coming out saying yeah well, exactly you know oh well, well what was the one i thought would really catch was uh, uh rocket man hits a speed bump i thought that was catch, yeah. <laughs> ca catchy enough it's like oh boy how many people are going to use that one so right but it's interesting and I, he seems like a nice enough guy i just again just if you're old enough to remember the evil Knievel thing from 1974, you you realize it's like yeah, lots of things can go wrong, and it's basically the same technology. And yeah, it's really dangerous. I mean, uh, <laughs> it's very dangerous. I mean, uh, he's he, uh, according to him, he's he's kind of a recent. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's kind of a recent flat Earth convert, and he 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 launched himself uh, in 2014 with the same kind of uh, rocket. Yeah. Uh, it was only like 500 feet. I guess he kind of hurt himself really badly, and he, he he'd been planning to do it again ever since he recovered. And I think I don't know if he's sincere. He sounds sincere about his belief in the flat Earth, but it, it could also just be piggybacked on the movement to fund the thing. Yeah, uh, I mean, he. I, it's hard to tell with with different people in the community, depending on how long they've yeah. been in it. 
And yeah. I mean, his priority is obviously his Daredevil stuff. You know, he's he's sixty two. Yeah. He did NASCAR. He's a limo driver. This seems like a you know that that takes center stage. But he was nice enough to do the. Uh, you know, I didn't even know the stickers were that big when they made them. They're yeah. <laughs> they're huge. It's like, man, you can't even miss those things. And he put it on the truck. So, uh, again, yeah, compared to everybody else, to I mean, there's so many more members of the community that are that are deeper into this than him. But at the same time, oh sure, sure, I, I, yeah. you can't you can't argue with uh, media coverage, and so he did a did a bang up job. Hopefully, no play on words there. So, I don't want anything bad to happen to him. I don't. <laughs> no, of course not. No, either. But, cause, uh, but the thing is, the, the, what most people don't know is like Evil Knievel, he's going to be strapped in. Like somebody asks, well, doesn't he have like a bailout option? It's like, are you kidding? Right. There's no ejector no. seat on this thing. You know, he's, no, it's a tube of metal. Yeah. Really. Yeah. The if the parachute the fails, he's just basically a big steel or aluminum weight that's yeah. going to fall to the ground. I saw the pictures of his last parachute thing. They, they were not... Uh, the most confidence-inspiring no. pieces of work. Anyway, sorry, I, I digress. So, what? Oh, no where, where can we? How long have you been? You just kind of this was thrown across your desk because of him, basically. No, no, no. I've been uh, talking to people uh, in the community for about a month now. Oh, okay. Cool. It, it started out where I, I I forget what the original Facebook post I made was about. And then a friend of a friend came in and chimed in and posted something flat earth. I think it was a, an Eric Dubay um, supporter. Video. Oh, oh, okay. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Eric over in Thailand. Yeah. 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 And so I just kind of found it fascinating. I, I know there's been an increase in precedent in the last couple of years, but yeah. I don't know. I, 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 I kind of didn't know if it was for real or not, but uh, I just oh, yeah. kept talking to people and I just, it's really fascinating. Oh yeah, yeah, oh. and that—that's what the guy this morning said. He, th I hear that word a lot. It's like you know, it's, I'm it's sure. intriguing, sure. fascinating, interesting. It's like, is this so? It's a real thing. Uh, I had like one of the the biggest UFO guys ever in the you know big UFO researcher, and and he he pot, we're we're supposed to do a debate he and I, and he didn't know that it was a real thing, and, and we're ten minutes into this thing. His name is Stanton Friedman. You may or may not have heard of this guy, okay. and he goes, he goes, whoa, 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 whoa you're talking about this like it's a real thing. It's not like a metaphor for something. I go, no, that's a real, that's a real concept. He goes, he just paused, this pregnant pause at the end. He goes, well, how does that work? And I was and it's like, okay, well, the debate now is over. Now it's going to turn into a tutorial. So that's, that's what we did. But yeah, it's a real, yeah, over the last couple of years, a very real, and very uh, quickly growing thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, I've been just trying to wrap my head around it, really. Yeah, I can imagine. And uh, okay, before I get into the, I'm sorry, I'm gonna. You're probably gonna end up answering a bunch of questions. The, you've the, answered that's okay. I that's that's what it's actually my role. <laughs> I yeah. I answer a lot of the same questions, so it's it's okay. Before we get to that, uh, just how was the conference? Oh, the conference was so great. Uh, yeah. it was, uh, it was the, the energy level was off the charts. I had already been to like seven meetups beforehand, regional meetups mm -hmm. down in California and, uh, Seattle and parts of uh, Canada. And they were, they were fantastic. And this thing though was, was amazing. The, it was super, it was very professionally done. The producer did a fantastic job. All the presenters were great. Uh, we didn't have any incidents we couldn't handle, uh, the security was great. The venue was, the venue was fantastic. Uh, all, when you get there, you got to remember everyone there, a lot of people that are there are just there to meet others that aren't going to judge them because right. you get a lot of judging. And when that happens, they, it starts kind of revving up like a turbine to where fly, you know, people are just, the, we closed the bars that were, they were in the hotel and, and, uh, just because people wouldn't, didn't want to go to sleep. I mean, I had so little sleep. Uh, right. <laughs> and uh, and I did a keynote speech on the first day, and then I hosted co-hosted the award show on the second night. And by the time that was over, oh, it was just I was so wired, uh, and it wouldn't end. I mean, there were you know all the flat earthers in the airport going home, and I had four or five on my plane, just on my plane right. with me going back. Uh, so it was a fantastic experience, and and humbled to be a part of it. I mean, remember, it was the first one in the what, 241 year history of the United States, and probably first in 500 years of Western civilization. 
So mm -hmm. it was it was fantastic. I, I couldn't say enough about it. Some great videos out there about it, and I have some great compilation stuff on it as well. Oh, cool. Yeah. Okay, then. Now for the, the skeptic portion. Oh, sure. <sighs> okay. <laughs> uh, I, I, a lot of these things I've been seeing, uh, especially on YouTube, is just you can't perceive the curvature of the earth so it must be flat it seems like a limit of perception or w whatever mm -hmm. but uh lots of things i can look at and it seems like proof of a rounder to me okay such as i'll go through them uh eclipses eclipses sure or do you want me to address them one by one yeah why not oh, okay sure anything <clears throat> and when it comes to anything in the sky and I'm out of water. Eventually, I'm going to have to get a glass of water. The um, When it comes to the sky, anything is pretty much possible because what we're talking about is a giant planet. And I don't know how old you are. Uh, a giant planetarium, uh, a terrarium. So if you've ever gone mm -hmm. to like the Hayden Planetarium or whatever, yeah. we can replicate pretty much anything in the night sky, inclu including waxing or waning crescents, including comets, including stars, uh, including uh, not solar eclipses because we, we don't have the, they haven't been updated to handle the, the, the lumens of the sun, uh, but definitely lunar eclipses. Uh, so that and you, the comes down to when you walk out of that planetarium, who's to say you're just not in a much, much bigger one? Because that's really what we're talking about here, where you're, you're in a right. giant Hollywood studio. You're in a, a building that can simulate, but it's so, so big that the projection system has got to be advanced way beyond our capability. Whew. So, well, that, <laughs> I, I was going to go through them, but that... Maybe I'll oh, yeah. I mean, like, what? You say, well, the planets are spherical. I know probably just about every question you've got on that list. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. So, uh, but before I get back into maybe some, some things you do have answers for, mm -hmm. I mean, what you just described is just it raises so many philosophical and theological oh, questions. Yeah. yeah. Like, what is, I mean, what does that mean for you? that the underlying subtext of this whole thing and the reason because eventually you're going to come back to why would you hide it but i think you've kind of already uh, <laughs> what <That's on> my... <laughs> the what that's on the list oh yeah 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 why would you hide it i mean that's literally every 10th question every 10th email sure. i get is that why would why would you bother hiding it's like because of what you just touched upon which is it's so big and touch and, and it goes into so many things theological spiritual that the, the underlying subtext, though, is if this is real, if you are in a giant building, then there's nothing organic about it, which means you're not alone, which means you've never been alone. And now I'm not saying, you know, I'm not I'm not going to scream for the rooftops intelligent design or that's the handprint of God over there. But it's one step closer than what we are now. At the very least, it's an event, advanced civilization. And one of our first questions, if we did run into him, be, hey, do you have God's phone number? You know, right. that's what we're, that's what we're talking about here, which is why you would hide it, because the implications men in power like keeping power. There's an old saying, and that is men rarely relinquish power voluntarily. And mm -hmm. that's what we're talking about here. Whereas, you you know, you get your creepy group of, of men in a really dark room smoking around a board table, you know, the, the super powerful. And it's like, well, what's the worst that could happen? And you run down the list. It's like, well, academically, let's see. Uh, everything would be turned upside down. Astrophysics and astronomy would be wiped out overnight. All the remaining physical sciences, take your pick, geology, hydrology, biology, anything with anology, would have to be re rebuilt literally from the ground up. Even biology would have to be reset to a whole bunch of different things. That's just the academic part. And that's, that's huge. That's every university in every country then you would have to probably, I don't know, suspend trading on all world markets for at least a month or two or longer until you figure out exactly what this meant to all the economies of the world. Remember, if, if Donald Trump caught a pneumonia, I'm sorry, caught pneumonia tomorrow, the markets would react, you know, if it was serious enough. And that's just one man. Think about an entire realization, an entire paradigm shift of where you are. But the biggest one, of course, is circling back to the beginning. You and I are not alone, which means spiritually, what happens then? Do you still go to war with the other guy that's on the other side of the hill? You still fire those cannons? Do you still commit hate crimes or sex crimes or anything like that? Because, yeah, there may not be somebody, uh, you know, with a scorecard standing over your shoulder, you know, you know figuring out how they're going to judge you. 
it could be as simple as a, a parent sitting on a couch looking over the top of your newspaper, make sure you're not going to burn anything down. But that's what we're talking about here. If, if that suspicion is there, people would act differently. They would not act natural anymore, which is part of the reason I think this place was built in the first place, was that we acted naturally, figured out things on our own without intervention from the outside. And, just, you know, determine like, well, okay, what do they do if this happens? What do they do if this happens? Because if you know, there's absolutely no, there's somebody in the outside. Because right now God is still, and I'm not trying to, you know, poke, poke at any religion. God is still a concept. Mm -hmm. If God becomes more of a, you know, coalesces into something more material, the, you know, the, what, I'm sorry, let me, let me use a, a different uh, analogy. Sure. The naughty and nice list doesn't mean anything until you see Santa Claus sitting in your living room. When that happens, you'll never do, you can't do anything naughty again. Well, I mean, you could, I suppose, if you were a real sadist or something, but, but your <laughs> chances are you're not going to, because it's like, you know, there's, there's consequences. So that's the big reason why. And once you, you, you know, you're at that board meeting, these, all these topics are rattling around that room. That meeting lasts about 10 minutes. And it's like, yeah, we're just gonna keep this, keep a lid on this thing for as long as possible. Uh, spend as much money as needed and make some some broad strokes that uh, if we keep quiet enough uh, we can we can keep this thing going for a while like locking down antarctica from a corporate sense like mm -hmm. militarizing space uh, those two things alone which happened basically in the same year 1959 in my opinion the the year the world changed once you do that you got a great great head start at keeping the the general public in the dark because remember, and I know I'm rambling here a little bit. Um, no, it's good. Remember that the, the Truman Show, the only reason that was even mm -hmm. a movie was because they made production mistakes. It, it, it's like, okay, multiple production mistakes to where he finally figured it out. It's like, oh yeah, my life's, right, right, right. My life's a joke. To where he made it to the end of the, with a sailboat, the general audience didn't realize. It's like, look, he had to leave once he got to, to the edge because there was nothing to go back to. He's, you know, even though the producer's like, oh, go back. It's like, why would you go back? At that point, it's a complete lie. Then everybody knows that you're in on it. You're just one of the actors like everybody else. Uh, the more intriguing question is, if Truman wasn't the guy, let's say that it wasn't just Truman that, that was in the dark. Let's say quite a few of the townspeople were in the dark. Let's say the mayor was in the dark. He goes out there in the sailboat. Does he walk out that door? Mm, maybe not. He's got a lot more to lose. You know, he's got, right. he's got a rich lifestyle. He may have mistresses, who knows, but it's going to be a much, much tougher choice for him. You know, it's the devil, you know, versus the devil you don't know. And for like the mayor, that door represents, he has to give up everything on what? He doesn't know what's on the other side of that. Truman, he had to go. So, sorry, that's mm. my little rant. Well, it's totally apt metaphor. <laughs> um, okay, so, I mean, you just kind of, went on a screed about it but still yeah. Yeah. Uh, according to you know accepted science what the they say the sun something like 93 million know, miles like, away 800 i was gonna say however many billion years old I don't oh know, yeah yeah that yeah 4.5 something like that and yeah. that comes itself from a supernova blah 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 mm -hmm. so w that's that's kind of the consensus the scientific consensus sure and the flatter thing is uh it's just crazy to me. I know. Sorry. I know. No, it's sorry, a, I kind it's, of lost my train of thought. You brought up a lot of good, <laughs> good points just now, and I I kind of lost it. It is. It okay. is. It is crazy. But what's your, what's your alternate? What's the alternative explanation? If if it's not done naturally, and our species isn't something like two hundred thousand years old, is there evolution? How old's the Earth? Right. Where did it come from? I mean. Right. Uh, you say maybe a superpower for alien, and maybe they could pass our phone number along to God, but uh, is, how is, does it uh, work? It's, you mean, how does the whole system work, or is there any alternative between, you know, it, it, other than flat Earth and globe Earth, is there anything else that, that, it, that it can be? Is that what you're kind of asking, or you just kind of want to know the, the, the overview? Well, well, it seems like with the, the, do, the dome Earth, right. um, you turn Earth into a terrarium, or right. aquarium, I don't know right. the right term, yeah. which implies there's somebody outside of it, somebody right. who made it, Yep. And I, so are you religious? Do you believe in aliens? Is um, it both? 
Uh, do you not I, really know? No, 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 I do. I do. I was I was very religious when I grew up. Uh, I was a strong born again Christian by the time I, I went to college. And then, but I grew up in a rural island up in the Northwest near Canada. So when I got to college, it's like, wait, there's other religions. There's, you know, because you're only shown what, right. what you want to be shown. But I fell away from that for years and decades, as a matter of fact, where I, especially since I was into tech, you know, I started playing video games for a living and I did customer support and software training for years and years. And so God took a far, you know, back of the bus type situation with me. And when I got into this, it sort of pulled me back spiritually into uh, not, not as much, you know, not like I, I jumped right back into Christianity, but I jumped back into a bigger picture, which was that, yeah, yeah, something else, something else built this. Now, when it comes to aliens, you a lot of a lot of different conspiracies dovetail into this, but aliens take a whole different track. Meaning, uh, sorry, I gotta, I gotta hang up on somebody who's trying to call me. The um, uh, they take you on a different track because if Mars and Venus and Jupiter and Saturn are just lights in the sky, then what exactly are aliens? You know, what are these? What are the things flying around? I've seen you know ships flying around. You wanna you wanna have some fun. Uh, if you got the means, pick up a set of night vision binoculars and let your eyes adjust and go out on any clear night and start watching the sky. It'll freak you out. And I was into that for years before I was into flat earth. There is a lot of stuff up there and it ain't us. I can tell you that right now. But, but I don't think they are from another galaxy or another solar system or anything like that. I think they are probably older versions of us, meaning we're not the first ones to rent this apartment by any stretch okay. uh, you know like uh, look look at the sunken cities off of india or the sunken cities off of japan or how old are the pyramids or bimini road or bosnian pyramids take your pick you know what mm. version are we in here because we wouldn't be this wouldn't be uh not only this not be a one-off but we wouldn't be the first group uh, you know I've, i have little doubt that some other civilization was here and they had to make way for us and then once we've run our course somebody else is going to come in kind of like uh, if you treat it like a school where uh, with seniors it's like yeah well you, you graduated yeah you, you don't have to you, you can't stay here you got to go because there's other freshman class coming here i think this is more of an educational process more than anything uh but do okay, i believe who, who's running the school it's a good question. It can only be two answers. It's either got to be an advanced civilization, which is far, far beyond us. You know, right. like, I, I throw out a lot of movie references, AKA contact. The, one of my favorite lines was con right. from contact was when she asks, did you build it? Right. And he goes, we didn't mm -hmm. build it. We don't know who did. We just, we just yeah. found it. Uh, it's either an advanced civilization or some group or some being that claims itself to be some sort of deity. Uh, either way, it's one step closer to God that we've never we've never seen. So, and, and as far as anything else flying around in here with us, are they the custodians? Are they the janitors? Obviously, if if there are, let's say, a, other advanced civilizations, there there's protocols in place. They're not allowed to come down and just mingle, with, you know, right. take selfies and sign autographs and wave and leave <laughs> because they 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 create too much havoc. Uh, perfect example, if you want to look up something really interesting, and I know I'm rambling a little bit, look up just the 1561 Nuremberg event. It's fascinating. The the greatest UFO sighting of all time. A massive armada is fighting over Nuremberg, Germany for a whole hour. Mm -hmm. And then a third faction shows it. And it was amazing. Uh, but the, the point was, is that even they weren't allowed to put their ships down or whatever you want to call them flying aircraft right. carriers and uh, and talk to people because it would be too influential especially in the 1500s they the only reference they had science fiction wasn't even a thing so in the 1500s right. the only thing they had was biblical so they all so it's like well it's a sign from god that's the last thing you want so anyway sorry oh that was great i appreciate it <laughs> no um worries. okay um let me see here Okay. Uh, what about the senses or the seasons? <laughs> my, my, oh, my no, no, no. Never... The seasons. Sure. Um, what about the seasons and perpetual, uh, you know, lightning, daylight. Yep. Yep. Day, yep. Yep. Yeah. Nighttime in the, in the Arctic. Okay. No way that... So how does that, work? if 
think of it like this. If we are on a circular disc with, well, let's, let's call it a planetarium or terrarium, whatever it is. A, a, a sports stadium is a great reference because it actually would look somewhat like a sports stadium from the outside. Very, very wide, but the roof doesn't have to be very high because most of our civilization lives in a, in a shallow, shallow band. I mean, 95% of what we are live from sea level to one mile up. That's not a lot of, that's not a lot of distance. Uh, commercial airlines cap out at 10 miles. Uh, spy planes cap out at like 20 miles. But that being said, the sun and the moon are probably in here with us. Very, very small, uh, like, like, a, like a mobile uh, twirling around a child's crib or uh, the graphic example would be like the yin-yang symbol, only much, much smaller. The sun and the moon would be, and I'm mentioning this to, for size, will actually kind of help what I'm trying to explain here. The sun and the moon would be less than 50 miles wide but they'd be very, very close. So it would look just like what science would tell you. What it's like. Because remember, the sun in the sky is a, you know, is a pretty small dot. I mean, yeah, it's very, very mm -hmm. bright, but it's a small dot. And they said, well, yeah, but it's really, really big and really, you know, 93 million miles away. Well, which is why they'll, they'll bring up like the sticks and shadows argument. And I'll go, yeah, it's not bad, except the sticks and shadows argument also works if the light source is really, really small and really, really close. It's, it's all relative. Yeah. So when it comes to the seasons... Uh, think of a uh, uh, needle on a record player. How it went, you know, again, I'm dating myself. As, as the song or the album progresses, the needle moves in. And, you know, if you reverse it, the needle would move out. Uh, yeah. same, same thing with, oh, God, there's so many different avenues I could go here. Uh, as far yeah, as I've the, seen it uh, described as like a kind of a maypole thing. Yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah, 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 similar. And the and the light source also doesn't have to be omnidirectional. It could be directional, on on top of it, uh, because that's that throws people. I mean, I actually listened to a guy who made a video. who's going, it can't be because if the sun was that close and eight and four hundred thousand miles across, it would take up the whole sky. And it's like, yeah, right. but you're you're hanging on to the whole size thing, and, and you don't mm -hmm. have to do that. So that's that's more or less how the seasons work. Also, by the way, the, the sun wouldn't be the only heat source in this equation, meaning uh, sure. the jet stream in the upper atmosphere, the underwater conveyor system in the oceans, yeah. even the magma system wouldn't be organic. And I've caught some hell for that, no play on words. But it's true. <laughs> I, I would, I've caught some, some hell for that because they said, well, you know, no, no, you have to be organic because a lot of people can't visualize a, a, a mechanical magma system. I'm going, are you kidding? You'd have to control everything because one super volcano and that's it. Show over. So, sure. Yeah, anyway. Okay, and, well, which, that, I mean, which that's also a pretty good explanation for the seasons, but I, it still doesn't answer for me anyway. Maybe I wasn't paying close enough attention to the, okay. the idea of. Uh, you know, perpetual daylight or oh oh no nighttime. no that's no that's fine. If the sun and you can you can look this up. There's some wonderful videos on it. Uh, not necessarily on my channel. There's other guys that specialize in it. The um, uh, if the sun is very very small, and you just move it off into the distance, it goes away. I mean, it sets because of a law of perspective. So mm -hmm. and again, and and if it's a directional light source, that would really help. So yeah, if it's an old if it's a 50 mile wide light bulb then oh yeah you you can you there is no perpetual day because that's one of the first questions it's like well what about time zones wouldn't it be light like all the time all over the place it's like yeah if it was really really big because unfortunately the models we use just to get the sun to show up on the models because remember uh, it, we make it it's they're always oversized i mean the sun on, on mm -hmm. most of the models we use are oh, well, god it's got to be pushing 500 a thousand miles wide uh, but it's so but if you shrunk it down to 50 miles it'd be almost almost undetectable uh, you know on top of our maps because we're talking about a map that's tens of thousands right. of miles wide so that kind of help uh, I saw you saying there's there's no it's not it's not uh, daytime in um, oh you mean like in it, Australia right now or Scandinavia Oh no no you know, no you know, no! no it... North, according according to the globe um, globe model of the Earth, uh, farther north you get the seasons and sunlight. So in the summer, if you're high enough, high enough uh, longitudinally, Alaska or Norway, whatever, right. the Arctic, it's uh, sun the whole time. Right, right. Time, according and... to the axis of the Earth tilt, yeah. And and, and this but and, it, and this and this, and this would work on on the flat model for the arctic part the tougher part is the antarctic 
because eventually you're going to say you get to it's like wait what about the 24 hour sun in the antarctic because that can't be possible if you're talking right. about a sun that's rogue around the uh, uh, the other edge and there's two schools of thought there and honestly i don't know if i subscribe to necessarily either of them one is that because the antarctic is so controlled from a media standpoint meaning you know yeah you could fly down there if you wanted you know spend fifteen thousand dollars and have your picture taken with penguins but as far as setting up shop there with the antarctic treaty information that comes out of antarctica is very sketchy i've got people in our community that swear up and down based on video clips coming out of antarctica in fact we've called some of the people down there at the stations and saying why can't we get unedited video clips showing a 24-hour sun in antarctica because there always seems to be these mm -hmm. chunks that are missing and it's like, and they they say well it's a bandwidth issue we just don't have literally they'll say there's not a bandwidth to uh it's not a priority for us and there's other people who say mm -hmm. well there's got to be multiple light sources when it comes to the antarctic uh truth is we don't know there's there's something going on in antarctica and of course because it is the most restricted continent ever and the only treaty that's never been uh, unbroken uh, it's it's tough to get the answers that we need out of it all right well um in researching all this I, i've read a bunch of scientific papers uh, uh studies whatnot and and a lot of the common thread through people who are so-called conspiracy theorists is you really need kind of a boogeyman yeah. so, so a lot of people in your community attach NASA is full of Freemasons and Nazis, whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. Who, who's your boogeyman? Uh, I don't really have a boogeyman because for me, I, I tend to go with less is more, meaning because a lot of people say, well, you're talking about a cover that would be so huge, it would involve so many people, including all of NASA and all these scientists right. and all this stuff. I'm going, no, 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 no. This is one of those that's the opposite of, say, like the Manhattan Project. Manhattan Project, hundreds of thousands of people, they kept their mouth shut and finally we dropped the bomb and everything was great. Uh, this is the opposite of that, meaning every, you would, the, 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 it is literally, if, if there was a clear definition of need to know, I can't think of one. Meaning, unless you have a really good reason right. for telling somebody, you don't tell them. Meaning no airplane, airline pilots, 99.9% .9 I'll get to the boogeyman thing in a second. 99.9% .9 right. of NASA, the wrench turners, anybody that builds a, a fuel system, not, almost everybody you could ever think of when it comes to NASA wouldn't be in on it. With the exception right. of the telemetry guys, the, you know, the guys that control the data feed, and mm -hmm. their bosses. That's basically it. Even the astronauts now, the Apollo guys, I think they knew, which is why they turned into freaking basket cases afterwards. Uh, mm -hmm. But even the astronauts now, remember, they're all Air Force. So yeah. you know, they're, they're soldiers. They're trained to do what they're supposed to do. And they sign their disclosure agreements saying, look, you're not even allowed. You don't have, you, this is above your pay grade. You're not even, you don't even, you're not even high enough clearance to ask these questions, which is why they seem to you know go about their lives like perfectly normal they learn from the apollo program so if you're talking about though the boogeyman boy mm -hmm. uh i don't know i don't He's even pulling the strings you know i don't i don't know if i could pick any one group because that's the whole point uh the first rule of power is stay hidden we, you know, right. if, if you have the ultimate power, it's like you're never going to know who these guys are because there's not going to be no tar there's no target on their back. So, I mean, yeah, you could you could say maybe you know the people with bank accounts so large that you that that money is pointless. Meaning, you know, we all hear about the publicly publicly rich. I think there's a private rich sector out there though that you know, it, who knows. I mean, honestly, it's such a hodgepodge out there. I mean, yeah, I could rattle off what ten or different ten different groups, going from the Illuminati to the Builder Group, Bilderberg Group to the Trilaterals to the Vatican to just. just I don't even know of the Masons. I I, I think ninety nine percent nine percent of the Masons don't know what's going on. Although, the, at the highest level, maybe they do because if you want to have some fun, look at the five tracing boards. I always thought that was intriguing. I did a couple of shows on it. Uh, it didn't seem to resonate with other people. I was going, look, the five tracing boards kind of lay out how you get into this world, what this world is, and how you leave. Uh, but nobody seems to focus on it. But who knows? I, I don't know if I... To, the short version is I don't know if I have an actual boogeyman. I just know that who you would need, the essential people you would need to make it a practical reality. 
So mm -hmm. like Capricorn one, if you remember that great movie, um, the only mm -hmm. people that knew were the telemetry guys. That was it. And only the high, high level telemetry guys, nobody that you ever saw sitting in front of a switchboard on television knew anything about anything. Uh, Cause you, right. you just wouldn't have to like would the president, like our president have to know. No, you don't have to tell no. him. In fact, it's, it's better. Like, some people said, well, Neil deGrasse Tyson. I was like, Oh nah, because you need him to, to act naturally. It, this sort of thing weighs on you, weighs on your conscience to where mm -hmm. you some some people don't react well to it uh, they they wouldn't be able to function so which is again the apollo astronauts they it it, it was too much for them it, you know they wanted i believe they actually wanted to be heroes and then they were told right. at the last minute no you, sorry you're not going to be heroes and here's why and this, you know at that point they were they crawled in, most, most of them crawled into bottles it was bad and buzz he's a, uh, i didn't want to get into it so sorry. <laughs> All right, no, no, it's no problem. Uh, a lot of uh, flat earthers I've talked to, it seems to be uh, not their only so-called conspiracy theory they they uh, buy in for. It seems to be lots of them, lots of overlapping things. What else? What else do you think is going on out there? Uh, and that's and that by the way, that's something I preach to the flat Earth community, which is nothing else matters. Uh, when I used to be, I was like one of the conspiracy guys. Well, I shouldn't say the, I was into conspiracy so much that I had conspiracy boredom. I didn't like sit in a, in a basement and you know, have all the blinds pulled and, and cover everything with tinfoil. But I knew I had an opinion on just about every conspiracy there was, to his, to the, which mm -hmm. is why I got into flat earth, which is why a lot of people get into flat earth. It's like, okay, yeah. I've seen it. You know, you've watched everything on Netflix and now you're, you're skimming through stuff you weren't going to touch. It's like, all right, this series looks like a piece of crap. I think I'll binge watch it. That's what <laughs> that's what Flat Earth kind of became for, for me to where, but it's so big and it umbrellas everything else that everything else becomes second and third tier to where people, okay. I had a guy at the conference, I think he was from BuzzFeed, and he was just trying to grill me. And he was going, he was going, I, he was rattling off, you know, Sandy Hook and Boston bombing and 9-11 and all this stuff. And I was yeah. just, and I was, I was rattling off. I, I'm going, yeah, I had an opinion on these things. But honestly, I, like when he got to chemtrails, I'm going, look, I don't even care about chemtrails. All I right. do now 24-7, well, the exception of sleep, is I do flat earth. <laughs> I, I had my favorites, but now they just seem so... You know, it's like, uh, you know, it's this. there's so much overstimulus with Flat Earth because it's right. so big that by the time you, it's like 9-11, it's like, yeah. But but then it puts it into perspective to where it's like, yeah, 9-11, you know, it's a regional thing. You know, it's the United States thing. And and yeah, it affected, I suppose, the whole world. But it was, it, it doesn't, it's nothing, it's nothing compared to this. So. That's, yeah. So. Yeah, you, you, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you do this 24 seven, you don't have a job or anything? No, this is what I do now. Uh, this, this really? kind of found me, uh, I, I try to tell people, look, I didn't find flat earth, flat earth found me. I was, mm -hmm. I was doing startup companies with friends uh, after the financial crisis happened, you know, Boulder, Colorado was just scrambling. It was like, okay, what do we do? What do we do? Because the, the game has changed. And I was, I had some downtime and I was looking at this thing, but once I got into it, uh, it, in fact, if I ever live long enough to write an autobiography, it's going to be called unsolicited because mm -hmm. everything came to me on its own. Uh, uh, the a company out of London said, oh yeah, we'd like to turn your clothes into a book. I said, okay. Uh, a little small radio network said, hey, you know, we'd like you to uh, come on board and do a show. I mean, literally after I'd been like interviewed on this network twice, they called me up immediately and said, hey, we'd like to do a show. What do you want to call it? And then finally, and I didn't even monetize my channel on YouTube for the first 15 months. And then Google contacted mm -hmm. me directly and said, hey, maybe you should think about monetizing your channel. I'm like, okay, right. okay, sure. Why not? And, you know, between these things and other little things that pop up, it's like, yeah, I, I mean, I eke out a living, but at the same time, I know bigger things are coming. Uh, producers have right. been swimming around this thing since end of 2015. Uh, but of course, you know, nobody wants to be the first really drunk girl on the dance floor. And that's what, <laughs> that's what their fear is. You know, they're just like, oh my God, because right. you, you, you can imagine your producer. It's like, you have these dual visions. It's like, is this the worst television or show ever? Or is it pure genius? <laughs> it, but it, love it or hate it, you can't ignore it. And that has been proven many, many times. Uh, the, not just in the comment sections, but the interviews I've done where people have called in, uh, the, the, the rating system, the amount of hits. I mean, I've given away 
oh my God, probably 12, 15 million hits on this thing. Just, mm. just because I made my stuff Creative Commons license because I had no faith in it. Meaning, no, yeah. I, when I put it out there, I didn't think it was going to get that much traction. And not right. that I didn't believe it was like, well, it's not like people are going to, you know, go along with this. And they did to where all of a sudden mm -hmm. people are calling me up and saying, hey, I loved your movie. And I go, right. what, what movie? I didn't make a movie. And, they go, <laughs> and some, some people had taken my clues and they had mashed them all together and put yeah. them into, uh, put them in YouTube. And next thing I know, they've got two and three million hits. And it's like, wow, that's pretty good. So... Yeah, it's that's this is what I do now all the time. The, you know, do the conference, do promos for the meetups, go to the meetups, uh, make. I think I've got nine hundred videos on YouTube now. I mean, a lot of them are you know podcasts and interviews and and all this other sure. stuff. But uh, yeah, that's this what I do. That's awesome. <laughs> So, so who have you, by the way, if you don't mind me asking, uh, so you've been, you've been talking to a few people, any, any, yeah. any, anybody stick out as, as, uh, uh, nuttier than most or am I like the nuttiest? <laughs> are you, are you know. can't say uh, Eric, Eric Dubay. You talk to little, Eric? Little. Yeah. Holy smokes. That's amazing. No, hard... Not, not a lot. He didn't really want to talk to me, but I kept needling him a bit and, uh, he seems the most out there, from from what I could tell. Yeah. Although he, I mean, he's not, you know, launching himself in a rocket. So. Who knows? No, no, he's not. No, Eric. <laughs> I, I'm 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 impressed though because very few people have gotten to uh, to Eric. He's kind of in his own. In fact, he's one of the few people in the flat Earth community who has never met another member. Everybody yeah. else has gone to meetups and got, you know after the conference. Now everyone can say, "Oh yeah, you know," we, and everyone's done hangouts with other people he has been kind of an island to himself yeah. and i'm still trying to figure out why but anyway <laughs> <laughs> well the, i mean i i learned of him through the friend of a friend on facebook so I, I i interviewed the friend of the friend and then i watched the dubai video and i interviewed him a little bit yeah uh i talked to man mike hughes uh and it was on my list to talk to somebody at this conference so that that's you yeah i'm still trying to talk to a few more i got one more person i i met on a message board trying to pick their brain. I'm trying to get more into the, like the, the psychology of all this. Oh, sure. Sure. <laughs> I mean, it's really interesting to be like, well, how do you explain this and how do you explain that? Cause there seems to be an answer for basically everything. Oh yeah. Yeah. But, but there front, shouldn't, but, but here's the thing though. It, there shouldn't be an answer for everything. That's how mm -hmm. most of this stuff falls apart. And right. when I, when I put this thing out there and like, for example, the curvature of the earth, I, I didn't even, t I didn't even do a clue on the curvature of the earth. And then all of a sudden people are coming. It's like, dude, we can't find the curvature. We can't find the curvature. We can't measure it in any way, shape or form, uh, forward, backwards, left, right. Well, left, right, where no one's going to be able to figure that out anyway, but forward and backwards <laughs> definitely can't. And, right. but when the psychology, what you're talking about, the big thing is it's kind of like, uh, the La Brea tar pits where, mm -hmm. People go into, you know, like the, the tar pits, you know, like the, the, the uh, baby rhinoceros falls in, the mother tries to help it and gets sucked in and, 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 you know, predator comes along, they get sucked in because everybody tries to shoot this thing down. That's, that's right. how it starts. The t-shirt is, is out there, which is, I, I got into flat earth because I tried to debunk it and everybody starts to, everybody hates it. Everybody hates it right off the bat. They think it's the most ridiculous thing ever. <laughs> and I was so stubborn and I considered myself a very good uh, creative problem solver, especially in the industry I was in, that I stuck to my guns for almost nine months. And mm -hmm. finally, fi everyone finally eventually just gives up. If you treat it like a court case, trying to prove the globe is a court case, everybody gives up. If you look at it long enough, and I, I, I warn people in interviews now, I, I, it's not even reverse psychology. It's true. It's like, look, if you got a good beat on things, stealing from men in black right then, if you got a good beat on things, don't look at this. Because if you, if you get up in the morning, you're happy with your life, do not look at this. Because once you do, you get, you get, you get the questions. The initial concept is easy. It's like, fine, you see the dinner plate earth model. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then it's like, you look at it again, it's like, yeah, but what about this? But what about this? And repeat that about 200 times. And then mm. finally you realize it's like, wow, there's so many things I can't answer. I'm going to go the other way. And it's actually easier going the other way, which is what I did, which is it's like, look, I'm going to go on the flat earth side and I'm going to come back and I'm going to make a series of videos and put it out there to the community, to the internet hive mind, because the internet hive mind misses nothing. 
and say, okay, right. shoot this sucker down. And I, honest to God, thought within the first two weeks, three weeks after I put this thing, which is why I put my phone number out there and my email address is again, blessing and a curse because my phone, I can't, yeah. I, I can't answer it anymore. The, um, I mean, I have to screen so many calls. The, by yeah. the way, your, your call came in as unknown, which is why I didn't answer okay. it because, because trolls right. will call me as unknown and I don't get a lot right. of them, but so when I initially, you wait, like we, if you ever take like a blue book test, if you're ever in university taking a blue book test and you think you've nailed it or your whatever test and, and think you've crushed it and you're about ready to turn it. It's like, ah, oh, I think I missed something. I'm not quite sure. That's the sort of feeling I had. I thought that some professor was going to call me up from, I don't know, pick a university and they were going to say, okay, here's where you went wrong. You forgot to carry the two here. You can just shut down your YouTube channel and get back to sleep. It's like, oh, great. You know, I was kind of waiting for that. Okay. You know, I knew it was going to be a hard call and it never, ever came. And after the first six months, I was like, okay. And that's what everyone, if you're kind of wondering how this sort of happens to everybody and how this thing just keeps growing and growing, that's how yeah. it happens. And the other reason is because science won't make an organized defense against it. It's, mm -hmm. I hate to say this, but the arrogance of, of mainstream science and scientism has really, really come back to bite them because they, up until now, again another movie reference they've been kind of treating it like uh it's beneath them kind of like um right. uh clubber lang and in, in rocky three you know it's, he, want, he wants the shot won't give it to him you don't deserve a shot he's beneath you you know rocky don't talk to him and that's what science has been doing you know, science does not make youtube videos for the most part they don't go out on social media and do any little things because it's all about the, you know, being published and it's all about their academic credentials. I had a friend uh, early on uh, who was, because she was in big in the academia and I go, okay, so why can't I get anybody with a master's degree to hire or hire to address this? And she goes, mm -hmm. you, you kidding? She goes, you know how much money it costs to get a master's degree nowadays? She goes, and right. if you make one wrong move, you'll never get published again in your life. You'll be ostracized from the community. She goes, yeah. you, you, she goes, you don't want to be that person who walks into a flat earth debate. And if you treat it like a boxing max match, if flat earth isn't knocked out in the first five minutes of the first round, there's real questions that have to be raised there because like, okay, yeah. why, why is flat earth still standing? Wait, we're in the third round. Why is flat earth still standing? You know, it just gets louder and louder. And that fear, they don't, because we have a lot of questions out there that mainstream science can't answer with, you know, the whole shotgun pattern approach. Yeah. You may be able to dress two or three or five, but there's a whole bunch you can't. And that's one of the reasons it's resonated that. And of course the message of hope, you know, the, the whole, you're not alone thing. That's, that's really, you know, really speaks to a lot of people. It's a simple message. You're not alone. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yeah, I know I ramble. Before, that's fine. Before <laughs> I forget, how, how old are you? I am 49. So I started Nine, this. And you, sorry. Where do you live? I, I live up in Seattle. Well, Seattle I used to live there. Oh, cool. Do you know the area pretty well? A little bit. Yeah. Uh, Whidbey Island. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Grew, grew up there. Try to sell uh, AT and T there once. <laughs> I'll be darned. I uh, uh, yeah, rural rural place. Uh, went to Boulder, Colorado. Spent twenty years there teaching proprietary software, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, loved loved both places. But uh, now I'm just kind of you know that this is what I'm focused on, and and people the demographics are all over the place. Uh, in yeah. fact, it's interesting that that you contact contacted Patricia first because uh, there are more women in flat earth. If you treat, if you lump flat earth in with other conspiracies, which is kind of tough to do, uh, mm -hmm. it, there are more women in uh, proportionally in flat earth than there are in other conspiracies because of that whole message of hope thing. Uh, normal, your garden variety conspiracy is about 85% male. You know, for right. obvious reasons, you know, the whole dark brooding thing. As a matter of fact, Flat Earth has caught some grief from other conspiracy groups because they like theirs dark, you know, kind of like uh, Heath, right. Le Heath Ledger, Batman dark. And mm -hmm. it's like, well, how dare you bring in this message of hope and, and all that? It's like, why, why? And it's like, what? We're not doing anything wrong. It's like, you know, they, and they get really, really angry about it. And they say it's it's too too light, too kind of kumbaya type of thing. And so mm -hmm. 
uh, the average huh. conspiracy person, yeah, they we we catch some flack. Oh, I bet <laughs> we we catch some. Oh no, and which is why I don't. Oh no, if you watch the clues, the, I watch my clues. But the first line or the first paragraph of my clues was, "Look, I know guys that absolutely believe that the royal family is made up of reptiles. Absolutely yeah, yeah. convinced. And if you will, uh, and you bring up flat Earth to them, they will laugh you out of the room." It's like I, that's that shows you that. Well, you'd have to because the uh, the reptile people live on the other side of the hollowed out. Moon. Well, there, so yeah, there's, there's that. Flat Earth with a hollowed out moon. Yeah, exactly. No, you know what I mean, though. I mean, they yeah. they are conspiracy people. That that showed me how powerful this thing was, because your average conspiracy person doesn't you know. And, and these people are fairly open minded. In fact, flat Earth is the ultimate open minded oh. test. We, it's so I didn't coin that. Somebody else said it's like, yeah, you think somebody's open-minded? They they believe in all these things. Fine, hit them with hit them in the face with flat earth spray. See what happens to them. Usually they just kind of freak out like they got hit with mace. It was it, right. that's how they react. It is uh, contrary to what everyone's been fed their entire lives. So it, it is kind of jarring, you know. It will well. They, you know what I kind of compare it to, and I've been coming up with different analogies over the last couple of years. Um, the the lighter version because I, I don't want to use like sex abuse version you know it's where you <laughs> realize you were abused for for years and years I think that's right, a little right. harsh the 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 kinder gentler version is uh, that somebody comes up to you and tells you you were adopted mm -hmm. and your response is always going to be the same it's like it, which kind of lends to why why do I care if the earth is flat or round, you know, my, my wife still hates me. My kids don't listen to me. I still got to go to my crappy job. And I go, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter until you start believing it. Kind of like adoption. If I tell you you're adopted, you're going to look at me and go, whatever. It's like, right. it, and then, but you may even use that line. It's like, I don't even care if I am adopted until you do. And the second you right. do, then it just ripples in time all the way back to you all of a sudden start, start reevaluating every conversation you had with your parents since you were six years old, which kind of runs parallel to this, which is, look, you're shown the globe when you're six years old. And then yeah. that globe stays with you at least through high school. And if you go through university, it's a, even worse, but it's just a globe. I mean, is the, is the, the greatest form of conditioning we ever had. It's like, look, this is where you live. This is where you live. In fact, you don't even have to say it. It's just there. And right. it was there for your parents. What makes it even worse is it was there for your parents and their parents going back 20, 25 generations. Mm -hmm. So you were born in, you didn't have a chance because you're, you're, there's nobody alive, nobody in your family tree that's even written about when the earth wasn't a globe. It's right. always been a globe in the, in the modern civilization. It's always been that, which is by the way, the, the simplest narrative as far as, um, or simplest reason of why science would hide it. The narrative's too far along. You can't let something go that far. It's kind of the equivalent of saying uh, if somebody found a papyrus scroll, scroll that said the Virgin Mary's name was actually Susan. Right. Would, would they tell people? No. They're not going to tell people. Yeah. Like, that, that, that scroll's going to be burned because, like, look, it's like the, we've, we've already gone too far down the road. We're not going back and rewriting everything and saying that it's actually Susan. Uh, the Virgin Susan is never going to see the light of day. And that's just a name. That isn't, that isn't anything as paradigm shifting as this. So, I mean, science is an institution like anything else. They're no different mm -hmm. than a corporation. They're no, no different than a government. Uh, it's just men and men lie. You, know, you look, Enron happened. You know, there's, there's mm -hmm. uh, every major war spins it the way they want, you know, they want at the end, uh, Napoleon's thing, history, mm -hmm. or, I'm sorry, history is just lies that are agreed upon. And that's what we're really talking about here. Sorry, okay. again, rambling. Um, yeah, but uh, I'm sorry, I gotta go ask, where, where do you, where do you fall politically? How would you describe yourself politically? And does, do you think that dovetails at all with your belief in the flat earth? Uh, no, I have never voted in my life for anything, never voted. For, for, my, for anything, as, which was weird because I was like, uh, I was president of my HOA for like seven or eight years. And I don't think I told him that, but the reason why is this. I, I, and I'm going to use, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll use a Simpsons reference. You'll like this one. If you remember the Simpsons, the Kang and Kodos argument. Yeah. Which, you know, this one is like, okay. But I tell people, I go, look, let's say I want to donate a uh, uh, million dollars to a political party. Which one do I donate it to? And people will say, well, if you're Republican, you believe this and this and this. You donate it. But if you're Democrat, you blah, blah, blah. Going, I'm going, no. 
I donate to both parties because mm. they don't care where the money comes from and they don't care about right. loyalty. I buy both parties. And in fact, if I donate enough money, it's like say $10 million, I get to not only have dinner with them, but I probably get to sit in a few meetings with them on top of it, maybe even help shape policy. And, and they say, oh, yeah. well, okay, what's your point? And the point is I did that with $10 million. Well, what's your vote do? Right. Well, it does anything. It's just, I, I'm, I'm not going to go so far as to say it's an illusion of choice, but eh, that's kind of. They hard. are, uh, I mean, it's two major parties are shockingly similar on most things outside of social wedge issues so right i, I, I mean it's, it's hear you there people the, the matrix references look as long as people have a choice they're going to choose something and that's it and and again i, I get it I, I actually understand that that process and why that's allowed to or why you put, put that in place uh, again the, the first rule of power and that is presidents can be voted out kings can be overthrown uh, and if people think that it's like, oh yeah, well, I voted for this. You, you've heard this. You know, every time there's an election, there's winners and losers. It might as well be a freaking game of the week. You know? Right. Monday night football with, right. with politics. Fair enough. Um, but I do know that I, I, most I, of the people, by the way, mo I do know that most of the people in the conspiracy world, including the flat earth community do still vote. I, I totally get that. I don't know if there's actually a consensus on where they lean. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, at this point, I have merely anecdotal evidence. I would not, you know, presume to say the people I've talked to constitute statistical fact, but pretty much everyone I've talked to has been kind of a slightly right-leaning libertarian. I, I, yeah, that that's, 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 sounds about it. right. Yeah. 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 And and that's fine if they want to. I, I think they're missing the bigger picture, but that's kind of one of the things I do, bigger picture. Cool. Mm -hmm. All right, Mark Sargent. I really, really appreciate you taking the time. That was great. Oh, ha happy to do it. Is there anybody else uh, next on your list that you're having problems getting a hold of? Or do you want me to send a I'm, heads I'm up? I'm trying to get a hold of an astronaut, but I don't know if you're going to be able to help me there. <laughs> if you got somebody in mind I should talk to, you know, let me know. Uh, as far as like an astronaut? No. Oh, or, or <laughs> well, just people sure in general. Do, but... uh, no, I mean, there's... Yeah, in the, in the... Oh, there's plenty of people you could you could talk to. Uh, I could... Yeah, there's but do you, you Are you looking... Somebody in mind. Are you looking for? I mean, I I think I've pretty much, with the exception of like Eric, I think I can track down just about anybody. Uh, e, are you looking for secular, religious, uh, male, female? What are you looking for? I was kind of looking for a girl. That's why I, I originally contacted Patricia. Patricia. Yeah, probably the wrong choice. Super refined, no. uh, super elegant. Uh, no. Probably yeah, probably not the best choice. Uh, even though she's yeah, very, hustler, hustler is a tough sell too. For it some it can be, it can be. I'll yeah. tell you what, I will, I will, I will poke around since I got your contact info, and I will see if I can, okay. I can find a woman. And if anyone can find him, I think I can. Uh, All right. And then after that, we'll see where it goes. Okay. Great. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate you taking the time. Pleasure. You have a good day. Bye.